We found one of the most beautiful cafes I've seen in a very long time. So, do you guys like America? Do you like America? Yeah. So it's a little bit annoying. It's gonna be a party later tonight. What a score. Oh my god, that's the most ugliest building I ever seen. Traveling the world on an endless adventure, we set out on our journey. As a family of four, we look to explore other cultures, food, music, life, and whatever comes our way. We aspire to find the beauty and humanity of the world while being able to share a little with others. Come follow our journey. We are Jason, Lenka, Alex, and Mia. We are the family on the run. We are officially in Kosovo! I cannot believe it! So we don't know really what's going on, but we see Bill Clinton literally everywhere. We see Statue of Liberty, we see Bill Clinton everywhere. They even have a boulevard name after him. This is insane. Okay, welcome to our Pristina apartment. Yes, this is hi. a one single room. That's for us, all four. Yeah. Mia has her own air mattress. Mia, don't break the air mattress. We have the own bathroom. Beautiful, nice shower head. Yeah. And we are right in the center of Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. We've heard about Kosovo growing up and I cannot believe that we are here, finally. We are super excited to see what Kosovo is about. There are 90% of Albanians living here in Kosovo. So we kind of know the language now, we are kind of familiar with the culture, but I'm sure that there's a little difference here and there so we are really curious to find out how it is. Tension between the Kosovan Albanians and Serb communities simmered through the 20th century and finally resulted with the Kosovan War of 1998 and 1999. This monument behind me was unveiled on February 17 of 2008 when Kosovo finally declared its independence from Serbia. They chose the English word newborn because they had a new hope for life. Today we're gonna show you Kosovo of 21st century. From what we've seen so far, this is definitely a bustling city, much busier than what we saw, for instance, in Skopje. But it still kind of has a little bit of a village feel. There's like little areas here, lots of cafes, lots of little restaurants, and everyone is out enjoying the day and enjoying the weather. And to be honest, this is kind of a, a nice place to walk around. Mm -hmm. And again, just people here are super helpful, super nice. I don't know, it's, I think it's a thing about the people in the Balkans. They are just really warm and really kind. Ugliest building I ever seen. Ah, Mia, are you sure? Well, the National Library of Kosovo is often referred to as the ugliest building in the world. A bit like a game of Tetris gone wrong, but you can still find beauty in it. Certainly something we haven't seen anywhere else. So here's a fun fact about Kosovo. For their local currency, they are on the Euro. So I gotta go to the ATM and pull out some Euro currency. 
They're not yet in the European Union, but somehow they're attached to their currency. So it must be like an economic zone type thing, but I gotta find an ATM and go get some money because we are starving. So we are just entering the main walk street and they have these cute little stands. And not only local, I've seen some American donuts here, which is pretty funny. So we are gonna go and check it out. Looks like they have an actual festival here. They got a some kind of concert concert venue or sound stage set up and I think this place is gonna be a party later tonight. What a score. So one thing we'll definitely say, there's a lot of cities we come to and we've clearly never been before and we don't know what we're doing or where we're going, but if you can find the local main walk street on the map, on Google Maps, that's always gonna be your best place to start because from there, you're in usually in the center of the action, it's the hub of the city, and from there you can branch out everywhere. This city seems to have a really amazing walk street. Really amazing. So we're really happy we discovered it and from here, it looks like there's a million places for us to be eating at. coffee culture because every single table is full right here. I totally understand them because I am craving coffee right now so much. We need to find it but first we have to find something to eat so still on a search. As we said before, Pristina is the capital and also a financial and political hub of Kosovo due to its significant location. Its population is about 150,000. Parts of the city were damaged in the late 90s by fighting, including NATO bombing, and in 2004 by ethnic violence. But Pristina was mostly spared compared with other cities in Kosovo. So one thing we've noticed in Albania, Macedonia, here in Kosovo, when you are eating at a restaurant, you have a lot of vendors coming here and, start, and trying to sell you stuff. So it's a little bit annoying, but you know what? I guess it's their thing here, so we are just going with it. I used to make a uh, sandwich like this. Mm. So I ordered mushroom risotto. Let's see how it tastes. The mushrooms are so, have so much flavor in them. The rice is made perfectly, so it's a little crunch. I have to say, I make mushroom risotto, and I make really good mushroom risotto, but this one might be better than mine. <laughs> okay, I'm trying. I can't believe for a second this is gonna be better than Lenka's because Lenka makes unbelievable mushroom risotto. I agree, that's kind of stupid. Like, the intensity of the mushroom flavors is so off the charts. Holy cow. This sauce is actually really, really good. Let me ordered a chicken filet with couscous and some kind of sauce and capers. And I ordered something a little bit more exotic. I ordered the chicken tagine, which is obviously like kind of a North African Moroccan vibe. We'll see how it goes. That is weird. Curries, herbs, spices. That's pretty impressive. That's actually really good. We've been to Morocco. We've had tagines before. So I can say this is really good. Everything in this restaurant has been super clean, super healthy, super good. Really happy with our choice. Prices are incredible. My risotto was only four euros. So when we paid, the owner came to our table and he asked us if he want to have coffee and we said okay. So you can just see the people here again. We keep saying that over and over, but we are very lucky when it comes to people. I have to knock it on the wood, but yeah, it's pretty generous. Well, we just had to stop shooting for a second because we just got interviewed by a some lo cool, local. So, some local TV, yes. It's so fun. So they were curious what, where we're from, where we're traveling to. They were excited to have us here. Uh, overall, a lot of enthusiasm. Can we ask you, do you like to 
speak English? Yes. 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 So do you guys like yes. Americans? Do you like Americans? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you do. Uh -huh. And why? Because they are cool. Yes. Why not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you like America? Yes. Uh, yes, I have Very much. Uh, my dad families in America. And we my family. Have, uh, what city? Uh, in Chicago, uh, Waterbury, Illinois, my uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania New York. Yeah. We have all around. You guys, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but you guys, we do. Oh. <laughs> have a nice day. Thank you so much. Ciao, 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 ciao. <laughs> well, our time in Pristina is up and we are going to Prisrain tomorrow. Spread out across 600 square kilometers on the slopes of the Shar Mountains, Prizren is the historical capital. It's one of the oldest settlements in the Balkans, dating all the way back to 2000 BC. Prizren is a beautiful melting pot where different ethnic groups meet and interconnect. And it was a treat to experience the harmony there firsthand. It's so beautiful here, wow. Yeah, I mean, you have this little like idyllic little brook or river coming through here and the old kind of cobblestone bridges and the mosques and the hills. This is, this has got to be the most beautiful city in, in Kosovo. It's such a picturesque town with little houses, tons of churches and mosques, beautiful bridge and surprisingly Turkish baths. You don't know what's that about, but probably the Ottoman influence here is very much alive even today. some pide and some uh, chicken cheese and also quesadilla and I'm waiting for my pasta. So this stuffed pide, if you don't remember, when we were in Istanbul, we were ordering it quite a bit because it's really addictive. They kind of call it like Turkish pizza. It's not really pizza. It's something different. But in some ways it's better than pizza, some ways it's not, but it's unbelievably good. It's so meaty and spicy and cheesy and the dough and it's just, I'm so glad we got a chance to order it because it's phenomenal. So this might have to be one of my favorite countries so far on this trip. Really? Why is that? Because it's so nice and it reminds me a little bit of like Czech Republic. And I love how the, I love how the food here is so good and tasty. Oh, and the people are really nice too. So we just ordered some milkshakes for the kids and I'm going to have a cappuccino. How are you feeling? Not the best. <laughs> so we are in a Konak restaurant in beautiful Prizren and here we have the owner who is from Turkey and we love Istanbul and we love Turkey so it's awesome to try some Turkish food and thank you so much for having us. That's a good one. Kosovo and we haven't found one thing which is 
geocache. Oh, we have a little hint that we will see. We have to find this building. It's supposed to be in the roof of the building. So let's go. What roof? Wow. So the hint says it's in the corner under roof tile. Under roof tile. Guys. Oh, roof. I found it! You found, found it? it? Alex found it? Ah, oh, it's stuck there. Okay, Don't pull the roof. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Alex. <clears throat> oh, that's Here. so cool. Oh wow, it's a long list. Look at that. A long list of names. <laughs> you got it? Geocache. Geocache. Everyone in? Yeah. Here's really kind of a big point about geocache, and maybe we've said this before, I don't really remember, but sometimes doing these, they take you to places in the cities or countryside that you just normally wouldn't go. And then all of a sudden you discover this really cool place that literally you wouldn't be in, you wouldn't have visited. And I think that's really kind of maybe what geocache is doing is it's kind of forcing people off just the typical tourist places and actually taking you in a little kind of nooks and crannies and little places in the country and you get to see so much more so in a strange way doing these geocaches is really like a gift to you to really kind of go out and explore and see yeah. things if you research anything about Brisbane, the first thing that comes up is this beautiful mosque that's behind me. It's called the Sinan Pasha Mosque. It was built in 1615. Its marble was actually taken from the monastery of Archangel Michael from the 15th century. They built the mosque with basically its stone. Probably the most photographed building in the city. So what's really cool about this mosque is what's behind it. When you come here, you know, there's this huge garden. And it's so cozy and beautiful and just charming, really gorgeous. <laughs> 